Hello there. Well, this may be a bit random, but uh, someone in the comments of one of my videos asked what happened to the interview that uh, someone supposedly did with Acerthorn. Now, the story behind that is a bit of a complicated one, though not very long, but I don't want to bother you here. Basically, what happened is that uh, this guy called Gibbo wanted to be a journalist. He wants to be a journalist, but uh, so he tried to do the interview with Acer Thorn to, you know, try to get his perspective and things like that. But he obviously didn't think about the audio because you can tell it's not very professionally made, although he kind of overestimated how bad it was. Uh, I just listened to it and it's fine. I mean, you can understand it just fine. But this led to some delay and in that delay, Gibbo started getting cancer treatment. Now, let's all pray for Gibbo here. Um, and I wanted to release this because the comment just reminded me of it in general and I didn't want this to go to waste or be left in the dust, so... If you're interested in the interview and you want to see it, even though I'm not talking about Acer Thorn anymore, uh, if you're interested in the interview, here it is, and pray for Gibbo, I guess. Enjoy the interview. Oh, and just one more thing that I remembered right before I rendered this. Um, you may find it a little difficult to understand Gibbo at the start because Acer Thorn won't stop fucking molding into his microphone at the start, and it's... It, it actually starts covering up his voice, but that issue goes away later. Yeah, Acer Thorn could actually stop molding for a second, but yeah, uh, enjoy the interview. All Go. right. Righty, yay. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, you wanted to interview me about my current uh, uh, litigation and pattern, and basically me being victimized by widespread harassment, doxing, and dogpiling, right? Well, I'm um, practically, yeah, well, I was going to talk about all that, but first of all, I was just going to talk about mainly, like, um, like, you know, just basic, basic questions first up, like, what's your favorite game, blah, 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 like, things like that. Well, my favorite then, game of all time, though I'm not actively playing it at the moment, would have to be Skyrim. It was just such an, it's such an enriching experience, and I understand that game has a lot of haters, it's ultimately up to taste, which is what I've been trying to tell people for years. It, it, they just don't like to accept that their opinions are just their opinions. But for me personally, I've gotten more enjoyment and just love and fulfillment out of playing Skyrim than, <clears throat> than nearly any other game in memory. Even though I grew up with um, uh, the Super NES game, Super Mario RPG, Legend of the Seven Stars, and that game will always have a special place in my heart because that's my childhood game, and no game, past, present, or future, will ever take that title away from it. But uh, as far as all time is concerned, even though I'm, I'm kind of I'm not playing actively playing it at the moment because I got burnt out on it, Skyrim is just, is just got to be the top spot. Well, say, yeah, I mean, like, good Skyrim in that, man. It's actually a pretty good game. I'm not into, like, those RPGs and all that, but that was one game I could actually sit down and play. Like, I didn't do the side quest because I don't like the dungeon, dungeons and things like that, but the whole, the whole concept of the storyline was just top-notch, man. Yeah. Plus and, the sense of immersion. Oh, yeah, and, and those dragons... Dragon stuff like the dragon braving, whatever it's called. The dragon that shouts. It. That's it. That was fucking awesome. Oh, sorry, my language. <laughs> um, and if you had to pick one one game to hate, which, which game would that be? One game to hate. Yeah, like what's your least favorite? Uh, <sighs> probably the one that I I uh, got the most amount of hate. For not liking, so I'd go with uh, Dark Souls. In my opinion, sharing your views about a game is just as important as as playing it for its own sake, and that and that's what adds to the enrichment and fulfillment. Which is why some of my earlier videos on my channel were dedicated to Elder Scrolls and Fallout, and that's why I got so much fulfillment from Skyrim because I had so much stuff that I could talk about and make videos about. Whereas with Dark Souls, my experience was overall negative, and so I made a video expressing that, 
And until I made my Elden Ring video, that was one of the fastest growing view videos on the channel for all the wrong reasons. Although Elden, my Elden Ring video has since taken up that spot of being one of the fastest growing videos on the channel for all the wrong reasons. And the fact that people have just harassed me and dogpiled me because I don't like Dark Souls, or also Fallout New Vegas for that matter, the fact that I've gotten so much toxicity and hatred towards those games has just put more of a sour taste in my mouth and just really made me double down on my hatred for those games than anything playing the games directly could ever cause. Well, have you have you played Dark Souls yet? Oh yes, I have. I have a 13 episode yeah. Let's Play on my channel where I basically gave up before I, before I even defeated the Gargoyles because I was just so fed up with the game itself. But then when I made my video expressing my dis Dane for that game, um, the hate that I got only increased my hatred for the game tenfold. Yeah, well, say, I've never played one Dark Souls game. The whole concept of it uh, looks way too hard even for me. Like, I like mm. to sit down and enjoy games, and I don't like dying. <laughs> Especially in campaigns. So that's it why you enjoy Skyrim. You like the power of fantasy? Yeah, pretty much, man. Like, back in the day, with Skyrim, it was, was kind of like you just like the, you just like the way Skyrim made you into this sti this bulldozing badass that nobody could touch. Yeah, pretty much like um back back in the day when I was a kid, like you know World of Warcraft and all that kind of stuff. Mm. I never uh, could get was... into World of Warcraft. I understand uh... that as an MMO, I've late I've since come to understand that what are known as filler quests or fetch quests are essential because they don't want you getting too far ahead because the game developers need time to develop more content, always stay one step ahead of the player, so these filler quests are kind of necessary padding, but at the same time, when I first played World of Warcraft, the, the filler quests were just all I had, and it was boring, so I stopped playing. Yeah. I mean... I mean, uh... like, at the start of my gameplay, go and collect eight pe <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, lung problems right now. Anyway, at the start of my playthrough in World of Warcraft, go and collect eight pelts. You'll get enough experience to advance to level two. Well, whoop data, that was fucking engaging, wasn't it? That was just fucking riveting. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, when I was a kid playing World of Warcraft, man, uh, I, I, was, I was like, oh, I'll only play like couple of hours and then before you know it the sun was coming up it was seven o'clock in the morning and I was like oh man that game's so addictive and yeah it's just not yeah. there. I could never get into <laughs> it honestly. Nah, I was all right. Well how did you come into the game and like what was your first game? Super like, Mario RPG console? Legend of the Seven Stars. Actually that was a bundle I, I, my, my Aunt Carolyn for one of my Christmases I forget which um, she basically got me a used Super NES, and I assume it was used because I didn't get Super Mario World with it, and that would have come with it if it were new. Uh, so she probably got it used just to save money. And she got me about six di different games to go with it. Uh, but Super Mario RPG was hands down the best of the bunch. Compared to the others, which was basically like, uh, Copa, like Grand Casino with the game, or some Sonic the Hedgehog-esque platformer starring Speedy Gonzales. Basically, it, the other games were okay, but Super Mario RPG just blew the other five games just completely out of the water. And that's what ended up being my childhood game. So my childhood game would have to be Alex Kidd on the uh, Sega Master. I mean, I, I've since come to learn that I love RPGs, mostly for their stories. I love a good story, and that's one of the reasons why I've started, and currently on hiatus, but I've, I intend to finish it, uh, playing and reviewing every Final Fantasy game, because those games are supposed to be really hardcore into storytelling. And as I've, I've reviewed all the way up to Final Fantasy X, and I definitely am loving those stories, at least when they're good. So, and, and that's just, I, I just always get so much satisfaction out of a good story in my games. Um, you can't beat a good story, man. Uh, have you played, like, the Gear of the Wolf franchise yet? I do not like first-person shooters at all. Don't you? Uh, that's fair enough. Everyone's got their taste. 
See, at the moment, I'm playing nothing but Rocket League, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, it, it, as, as, <laughs> as far as game, as far as ga game genres that are where I would get into it just on the gameplay alone, it would have to be a platformer. That is my favorite genre based primarily on gameplay. Though I, I love RPGs for their stories. Yeah. So, so you've been playing Final, Final Fantasies, obviously, you just said. Um, which one are you up to? 10-2. The first game in the series to be a direct sequel to a previous one, which obviously Final Fantasy X. Up until this yeah. point, it's all been, they've all been self-contained. You could pick up one and not have played any of the previous ones, and you and you won't have won't miss out on anything because the previous games have no bearing on the current one. But this is the first time in the series when it's been a direct sequel to a previous game. Yeah, I, I haven't played any Final Fantasy, to be honest. I, like as I said, at the moment I've just been playing Rocket League. Um, have you played any of the Total Wars? Turtle Wars. No, total, total wars. Total, so like, total yeah. wars. Okay. Yeah. Uh, no, I've never heard of that franchise. Is that a RTS? No. So yeah, pretty much. Yeah, it's a strategy, mm. real time strategy. I game. do enjoy. Um, I do enjoy strategy it's, games. But it's, uh, it's more like it's more like ancient history. So like you have like ancient Rome, Napoleon, and things of that nature. Attila and Free Kingdoms, like in China and all that, it's, they're pretty fun. They, they can be pretty hard sometimes, though, too. Oh, I'll bet. But, but they, they get interesting, because, like, you have to build up cities, combat civil wars, and all, all that kind of stuff. So it's Plus a, it's a 4X game? Yeah. Mm. But, yeah. Anyway, um... Let's go into these um, D D DMCA's. Yeah. Now I'm, um, I should point out because I'm involved in active litigation, there may be sometimes when I may have to decline to answer a question, but I won't lie. No, that's that's completely fine. I can understand all that. So, what was your first DMCA and why? <clears throat> it was against the Initiative Cookie Fellow, or Initiative Cookie, however you're supposed to pronounce it. I don't, uh, it's basically, the guy was just uploading shit against me, uh, not to critique or criticize or comment on, but it was just to harass. And I did some legal research, and I even asked a few lawyers, and they admitted that, no, if it's just designed to harass and dox someone rather than criticize their work, then it's not fair use. So I had considered fair use, and I determined that his... Uh, DMCA's weren't up to scratch, so I issued DMCA that I'm not his DMCA's. I determined that his videos just weren't up to scratch, and so I issued DMCA's against them. And apparently, if a if a harasser and a doxer gets held to account for his actions, all of a sudden he's going to play the victim and he's going to cry censorship and drum up support in the court of public opinion, and it basically just un and just unfolded from there. Well, see, um, I've, I've watched as many videos as I can find about these um, DMCA uh, claims and all that. And one in particular is probably, uh, what is it? Wolf, something Wolf. I can't pronounce that first one. Uh, Artemis uh, Wolf? Timmy. That's it, yeah. You, you got um, three, four, four strikes. Strikes to get them. And three have succeeded, and the channel is now terminated. Like, what was your intention of that? Because I can't find any my video intention about that. was to get them to stop infringing on my copyright in an effort to harass me. These people are harassing and doxing me, and therefore their videos are automatically not fair use, even if those same videos could be considered fair use under otherwise identical circumstances. Of course, they don't like the fact that harassment is not okay. They just think that I need to shut up and take it up the ass like the bitch that I am. So, whenever I hold them to account, rather than actually go through the proper channels and and just and actually issue counter notifications and do things the correct way, they'll just go crying to the court of public opinion like they're 
like it's their mommy and try to and just basically get people to double down on the harassment against me rather and basically just enlist a lynch mob against me take the law into their own hands instead of actually going through the proper channels which is what you're supposed to do if you think that your videos were fair use and that they weren't designed just to harass and dox me then let's do th then let's let's settle this like grown-ups in court that's what courts are for and if you got a problem with that well then america's a democracy you can push for reform so you want to, but whatever you do whatever you do it's not okay to just take the law into your own damn hands you're gonna get people to start harassing me as punishment for 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 not just taking it up the ass like you think i should well then you're basically enlisting a lynch mob to take the law into their own hands and give me extrajudicial punishment and i'm sorry but no that is not okay ever period do not take the law into your own hands but what what was it exactly that that wolf did that set you off like i as i said i can't find any videos because the whole channel has been taken down but oh she's she's created a new account she's created yeah, a new, I haven't, yeah. I haven't seen that yet I haven't yeah, seen that, it's, so. it's it's ridiculous that they're crying victimization when there's literally no harm, no foul. They, she was, I mean, she's not supposed to have created this new account. The DMCA says that YouTube is required to set up procedures to keep d those who were terminated from coming back. And an old, an old website at the turn of the century called, uh, I think it was Nepster or, or Napster or something like that, was basically sued out of business because they didn't do anything to stop people after their accounts were terminated from just creating new accounts. So, I don't see how YouTube is allowed to let this slide, but she has created a new account, and by now it's even bigger and has even more subscribers than her old account was when it got terminated. So she's crying victim, while at the same time, she's managed to rebound from this, more or less, chef's kiss. Well, I suppose at the moment, like, she's probably got more subscribers now, due to the fact that... This is pretty much hot hot ticket for YouTube at the moment. Like, you can just search up Ace Fawn or any of these names that I have listed here, and you will find your name on one. And Ugh. you know the debate and everything. People can find this stuff. Yeah, and, but well, at the same time, make I, make up your mind. Are you? I have you been wronged by me? Or I mean, you can't just say. You, I mean, at the same time, if you're gonna argue. It's a matter of principle that even though she was able to create a new a new channel, that you're just gonna that it's just gonna be that I should still be held to account just on principle. Well, then she needs to be held to account on principle and not be allowed to create a new channel just on principle. I mean, pick your poison here. Either she was able to create a new account and rebound from it with with absurd rebound from this termination with absurd ease at which point no harm no foul or the or, or you need to stick to principle which means she shouldn't be allowed to create the new account well i think I, uh, what is it sorry i'm so tired i'm butchering these i things. am tired too i, I mean I'm, <laughs> we, but, i mean but just for those watching at home uh i've been i got discharged from the hospital last tuesday and right now it's Saturday, so I've been at home for a few days now. I've been taking antibiotics and painkillers since I got home, and honestly, my 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 lung infection that landed me in the hospital in the first place has just been absolute hell for me. And so Gibbo here and I, or I, his name on Discord is is Gibbo. I don't know what his YouTube name is. He basically, we basically just had a row earlier today whereby it seemed like we were each ducking each other and trying to get out of the interview. And so we, basi we basically guilt-tripped each other into having this interview at this point in time. <sighs> yeah, I mean, at least we're doing it now. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, it was, it was kind of aggravating uh, earlier today <laughs> when you were basically saying that, you were, you were trying to get, that I was trying to get out of this interview... It, even though I had the epitome of a good excuse, my 
volatile health at the moment. But yeah, yeah. It, I'm, it, I'm, I'm a fed eye. Uh, I'm probably I mean, I, I'm fed. in I, I, I'm in a lot of pain right now, so I'm in no fit state to have to deal with that kind of aggravation. So I basically just said, "Fuck it, let's do it at this hour, and let's just yeah. get it out of the way." Uh, just because yeah, um, I just because I didn't need the aggravation. But anyway. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I came across like that. No. I didn't, didn't mean it. Was, anyway, it is what it is. Oh, sorry, but so um. Kratosis, is that the name? Oh, Kratosis is the most yes. vile, toxic See. piece of shit that I've ever had to deal with, with maybe the exception of uh, Sofian P and Initiative Cookie themselves. But he's probably, he's honestly done more damage because he has a much larger platform than either of those two and was able to spread the hatred and toxicity much more effectively. And then Sid Alpha came along and did it even better than he did because of his larger fan base. And ultimately, I've just been, at this point, the ta the harassment on my channel has gotten so bad that um, the comments that have been held for review by YouTube's auto mod are starting to outnumber the comments that managed to pass auto mod about twenty to one. Well. See, I watched I watched Kratos' first video, and I absolutely, personally, it's my opinion, I didn't see anything wrong with it at all. I did not see why it deserved a DMCA. What? What do you mean? I I saw I saw it was all fair use in my opinion. His, his first video. Well, he ha I mean he had I mean that's something that I just will just have to let our uh, let my talking be done in court. I did tell you at the outset that there might be times when I might have to decline on yeah. commenting on something due to ongoing litigation, but I won't, oh. gonna, wasn't going to lie. This is going to have to be one of those times. I mean, ongoing well, litigation, yeah, I prefer not to um, comment on my legal position. Well, that's, that's fine. Yeah, I'm, I'm totally with that. I'm just also giving yeah, my opinion as well. Well, at the same time, do you have, I mean, do you actually fully understand American fair use? Yes, I do. I hope so. I mean, I, I mean, it, it's just that I'm in, I mean, fair use requires a consideration of a multitude of factors and that I, and, and there are some instances where, um, the, the, uh, where that can negate fair use, that can, there are some times some factors that can single-handedly negate fair use to the exclusion of all other factors. And I'm just going to leave it at that. Well, I will say this. I'm not at, I, I did consider fair use when it comes to Sid Alpha's video about me. And that's all that and and that's all I need to do in order to avoid liability is I just need to consider fair use. I don't have to get it right. We'll we'll get to Sid Alpha like later on because I have I have emailed um, Sid Alpha. Um, Echo Echo Wilder. I haven't as I said I have not seen that video as well, but the DMCA attempt was succeeded. Um, who else we got? Oh, what happened with Skibbity Gibbity? That's actually a really good To my one. knowledge, he I mean, he hasn't really bothered me since uh, the the aftermath of that April 18th live stream debate. I mean, he's probably joining in on the harassment and doxing behind my back, but he hasn't I mean, after he had his initial row with me, he basically cooled off and I haven't heard from him since. And I hope it stays that way. Yeah, um because I don't know. Did he sign anything saying that he was wasn't a co co author of that stream? Or Could, I'm sorry, say that again. I didn't understand that. So, uh, uh, sorry, I'm a bit tired. Um, so when when you were doing that live debate with Skibbity Dibbity, did he sign anything saying that he was not a co author of that stream? Uh, no, he did not. But I, at the same time, I don't think he needs to. The, the legal default in the, in the United States is that the author is the person who uh, affixes the work into a tangible medium of expression. Were it not for me, were it not for me streaming that uh, Discord call, 
he his words would only have existed for a transitory duration. It was only thanks to me streaming it that it got fixed into a tangible medium of expression. And according to the Supreme Court in the United States, that's what makes you the author, not just the fact that you contributed to it. In fact, uh, as recently as 2015, there was a case in the Ninth Circuit called Garcia versus Google, where a where a woman, an actress in a movie who who gave like five seconds worth of voice for the movie, tried to say that she was a co-author because she had contributed her work to the movie, and the Ninth Circuit rejected her arguments utterly because she might have contributed her voice, but she didn't participate in affixing it into a tangible medium of expression. So, but, therefore, she's not a co-author. So, because Skinny never participated in... He, he gave his voice to the work, but he never participated in affixing it into a tangible medium of expression, therefore, he's not a co-author. But, we, we say that a lot, though. Like, for, for example, any interview Ben Shapiro does, you know, I think he did one with Bill... Bill Murray or Bill Murray or whatever. I think it was Bill Murray. And he posted it on YouTube and that I'm assuming that would be, you know, co right. author because he put his part into the interview. Well, I mean we'd have to like, look at like the we would have to look at the totality of the circumstances to understand why he's allowed to do that and whether and for that matter whether or not he's even allowed to do that he may be breaking the law and his opponent just decides fuck it it's not worth dealing with that's that's also a possibility that happens all the time on youtube when it comes to independent content creators like for example i recently came across a fan uh a fan fit a fan art uh called the slash street boys basically they lampooned various movie monsters like Freddy and Ghostface, etc. But they did so by making songs that were set to Backstreet Boys instrumentals. And honestly, I asked, I even went on Reddit, in Reddit's uh, copyright law subreddit, and asked some copyright lawyers, hey, how is this fair use? They're not actually lampooning uh, the Backstreet Boys. They're just using those instrumentals just to get attention and to avoid the drudgery of working up something fresh so how is it fair use and those copyright attorneys who post regularly on that subreddit were basically like most likely not fair use most likely backstreet boys are just letting them get get away with it just because they just don't want to pursue it yes that is a common thing in copyright law the copyright holders can choose not to enforce their copyrights if they are so inclined there is no penalty to not doing that. That's in contrast to trademark law, where you have to actually uh, enforce your trademark. You have to actually file suit to enforce it. Otherwise, you at risk losing the trademark protection. Copyright is not like that. You can cherry pick which acts of infringement you want to pursue and let go the actions that you don't. That is your right as a copyright holder. So... How many? So we need to know. So you mentioned that Bill Murray example. Uh, we would need to have the totality of the circumstances in front of us, including any contracts they signed and any agreements they meant they came to, in order to know if it's legal or not. And even if it's not legal, um, that doesn't mean that that doesn't mean that the the other guy is losing his rights by not pursuing them. He could... It could just be one of those largesse things. So, you're you're offering this Bill Murray example. Uh, it's it's not really a, a compelling counter-example here. Because it depends on every factor. It depends on a multitude of factors. Only some of which we can actually see ourselves. But it'd be like me going on TV or something and I'll tape... The interview, like, I hope, you, I hope you're recording this right now as well, so you have your own copy. Oh, I am. Yeah, I am. But if I went on national TV and do an interview with, say, the morning show or something like that, I have every right to use my part of that interview as I see fit for content. Well, it may, be, it may be in Australia that's how it works, but in America, if you just speak into the microphone but you aren't the one actually recording it 
then that then you're not an author. But then it brings me to my next claim, that accidental live stream. Yeah. You did. So, that's, what? That's te- well, then that's not... You can't copyright that if it was accidental, though. Says who? Well, because there's not creativity. You... How do you... Says who? When you say accidental, it means not creative. What do you base that on? Bear in mind, when I filed that lawsuit against Sofian P and Initiative Cookie and DGP 482, the judge in that case reviewed the lawsuit to make sure it was legally sufficient, and they agreed, yeah, this looks like you've got a valid copyright as the original and sole author. But but when you took YouTube to court, even YouTube, they said in the argument... They have the right to raise that argument, and I have the right to raise my own counter-arguments, and we have the right to let the judge decide. The judge has already telegraphed how he's leaning, and it's going to be up to YouTube to argue, uh, to make persuasive arguments to the contrary, which they really haven't really done. They basically just said it, it's an accident, therefore it's not creative, and they just expect that to just be the be-all, end-all, even though the judge has already leaned towards the, leaned against that. They, I mean, the judge can change his mind, sure, but YouTube doesn't... But, YouTube has offered precisely zero reason as to why the judge should change his mind. He's, they, they've, they've really offered nothing other than this is the law because we say it is. And, well, I don't know, YouTube made actually some pretty good points, and I'll put that up on screen later on when I'm editing a game over. Redact my personal information when you do that, will you? No, no, yeah, I will, I will, 100%. No. In, in, in any no, event, no, no. I've also, re- I've, also sub- I've also filed my opposition to that, where I provided my own arguments that there is indeed creativity in that work, despite it being an accident. Oh, well, I would try and find that as well. And yeah, and you know what that. happened when, when I filed that? Six hours after that, YouTube proceeded to take shit down from their website because they realized it contained evidence that would defeat their claims. I even filed a a a motion later that same day asking that the court uh, order the preservation of that evidence so that they can't just hide it from the court because they know it'll fuck them over if the if the judge sees it. So yeah, they're they're running I think they're running scared right now. They, they took that shit down six hours after I had filed my opposition because they knew that they were in deep shit. Hmm. And you also, you also put Alphabet, the sister company, in, in the lawsuit. Parent company, correction. Yes. Well, why would you do that? That's like, that's like me having something to be doing with Tesla, but I also bring SpaceX into, it, it's into a, it. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a clerical error. I don't see the big, uh, big deal about that. It was mostly a clerical thing, mostly a semantics thing, and it's, it's been. I've actually dismissed those corporate defendants from the case. I have the absolute and unreviewable right to voluntarily dismiss defendants from the case, and I invoked that right, and I dismissed the corporate defendants from the case, and now YouTube and Alphabet are seeking to rejoin the case as interveners. And and, and at that point, Alphabet is trying to... If, if they don't think Alphabet belongs in the case because they're just a parent company, and it's YouTube who is the only proper defendant, then why is Alphabet seeking leave alongside YouTube to be interveners. At that point, they're doing that to themselves. Oh, I don't know. I reckon reckon the police just were like, because you already put a court order and they'll probably just like, all right, we'll stuff it, we'll go for it. That's my opinion. I mean, all, I mean, bear in mind, that to get copyright protection, bear in mind, there is no law that says that accidental works are necessarily devoid of creativity. So all I have to do in order to get copyright protection is to show a minimal, a very minimal amount of personal creativity in that work. And the fact that it was accidental does not defeat that. So all I have, and, and bear in mind, I have the registration. It is registered with the Copyright Office. 
So I have a statutory presumption that my copyright is valid. And if you actually go and check out the uh, case law that YouTube actually uh, cites, that case law also states elsewhere that um, I still have a valid copyright even if the Copyright Office made a mistake in granting the registration as long as I did not act with an intent to deceive. Now, bear in mind, I did, uh, there, are I, there are two ways that my registration can be rendered invalid under that case law. I can either have acted with an intent to deceive the Copyright Office, or I could have failed to disclose relevant evidence to the Copyright Office. And that latter one is what the interveners, YouTube and Alphabet, are currently are currently going for. That it's the it's the fact that I didn't disclose this shit that um is is the reason why they say my copyright should be rendered invalid. The problem is I did disclose it. I disclosed the fact that it was accidental when I used the word accidental in the title of the work. So copyright office was disclosed that when I when I literally called it an accidental stream. And sec and when they said that I didn't disclose the complete lack of creativity, um I did disclose how much creativity there was or wasn't in the vi in that stream. And you know why? Because I had uh had uploaded a ver a full copy of that stream to the copyright office's website so that they could review so that they could review the work and see if it had all the elements for copyright protection so they they say that i didn't disclose it in the um, it, that i didn't disclose the lack of creativity bullshit the copyright office did indeed have access to all of the relevant facts and according to the very case law they cite and i make reference to that point in, uh, in my opposition brief According to the very case law that the interveners cite, uh, as long as I was honest and not deceitful and I disclosed everything, then it, I, I can still have a valid copyright and I can still proceed with litigation as long, it just be, and that doesn't go away just because the copyright office, through no fault of my own, made a boo-boo and failed to connect the dots when maybe they probably should have. So basically, once the Copyright Office decides to grant me registration, it takes a lot, a lot, to overcome that presumption of validity. So yeah, and I, I even provide more details in my uh, opposition brief. I provide full details there. And also check out my motion to order the preservation of evidence for uh, an indication of just how running scared YouTube and Alphabet currently are, and how much they're trying to cover up and conceal evidence. Well, why would they be trying to conceal evidence? Because they obviously want, because they obviously want me to not have a valid copyright in this case, but because the evidence that I've presented is pretty damn irrefutable that my work does indeed meet all the established criteria for copyright protection, they're obviously going to want to keep the judge from seeing that evidence. Yeah, but they're a multi-billion dollar company. I'm pretty, pretty sure they have good enough loans anyway. I don't think they have to real hide, but that's my opinion on it. Yeah. Now, a lot of these multi-billion dollar corporations, uh, a lot of these lawyers that they employ tend to uh, get around, get tend to win a lot, mostly because they use these kinds of underhanded tactics. It's basically a rich privilege where if you're rich, you get to do, uh, you get to get away with a lot more stuff. So I suppose I, you could, could take into account my like, big, big tobacco back in the day when big, big tobacco used to send people. Okay, can can we call that. a brief intermission? I need to uh, go to the bathroom real quick. Yes, yeah, sure. Sure, I'll, I'll I'll see you in five minutes. Yep.
All right, I'm back. Uh, now, I should point out, at this point, yep. we are getting dangerously close to uh, me discussing and revealing future litigation tactics. The answers that I've given up to this point are mostly redundant of what I've already filed on record, so there's no reason to keep quiet about it anymore. But we are getting dangerously close to me discussing litigation strategy that isn't already on record. So... Please bear in mind that I may have to start uh, invoking my right to not answer sometime soon. And as far yeah. you said, you were going to try and check out the uh, brief, the um, the briefs that I filed uh, in opposition to their motion to intervene. I can send those to you. Yeah, that'll be that'll be fantastic if you could. I'll do that after. I'll do that maybe after I go to sleep tonight. I'll wake up tomorrow yeah. morning and then maybe you can remind me and I'll send them to you. Yeah, that'd be fine. That'd be awesome because I would like to look look over that, and also probably edit that in, like you know, with your yeah. name and all that, no doubt, obviously. All right. But yeah, but yeah. Also, there's actually one thing here as well. <coughs> oh, sorry. Um, you two coughers, own... two people who were sick as hell, trying to have an interview <laughs> on Discord. Oh God. <laughs> Uh, life happens sometimes. Yeah. But yeah. So, you've, you've tried to buy your own channel, right? So I have I've tried the what? Message. You tried to boost your own channel. So I have a Discord message here, screenshotted from I forget where I got it from, but it says, "Hey, can everyone consider doing this in order to boost, help boost my follow account?" And it's just you saying just... You're going to have to send me the screenshot bottom. before I can comment on it. Oh, oh, yeah, so it's pretty much... You're saying to your viewers, create your place. Send me the oh. screenshot. I don't want you to describe right. it. I want to see right. it. Okay, I'll send it to you right now. Um, what is that? What did I save it under? 
Okay. Um, upload. Are you sending it on Discord or email? Uh, it's Discord, dude. Okay. I'm just, just trying to find it. I've lost it. Uh, 389. There. All right, let's take a look at this. Yeah, uh, okay, that happened a long time ago, and uh, let's be honest here, a follower count is mostly superfluous. It's mostly just there to keep people, uh, it, it's, I mean, to be honest, my, the amount of my followers is, uh, is a completely, it is a, is a largely unnecessary, it's mostly just there for bragging rights. It's, it, it was there so that I could get to Twitch affiliate status. But after that, I don't really care about my follower count anymore. Just like how I needed to get to a thousand subscribers on YouTube in order to qualify for the YouTube Partner Program, but after that, fuck the subscriber count, I don't care anymore. It doesn't do anything. Subscribers on YouTube and followers on Twitch are just the number of people who get really who get email notifications of when you upload a video or start streaming, but that doesn't increase the number of views you're gonna get. And I've, I've researched it thoroughly, and I've determined that there's really nothing, I mean, there's really nothing wrong with that. Now, if you want to say that it's scummy that I'm artificially boosting my subscriber and follower accounts, which I never artificially boosted my YouTube subscriber account, somebody else sent bot subs my way, most likely either in an attempt to get my channel terminated, because which that ended up not working out, I ended up just getting approved for the YouTube Partner Program, but, uh, it, so I went, I mean, I even posted a thread on Google support asking, hey, I think somebody's sending me artificial subs in an attempt to get me in trouble and get me terminated for, uh, bot, for bot subbing. And I was wondering, how do I bring this to YouTube's attention so that I don't get my channel terminated? But before anyone could answer, I had been approved for the YouTube partner program, so... Toodaloo! I guess it. I guess they didn't. I guess it all worked out in the end after all. As for Twitch follow, as for the Twitch followers thing, yeah. By that point, I had I had realized that the uh, that the follower count was a mostly superfluous stat that was really just like like remember years and years ago back when message boards and forums were a thing were the dominant form of communication on the internet but prior to the rise of social media. And everybody in a, in, on that site had what's known as a post count. And it was really just a completely pointless statistic that really just gave, that really just gave people a much greater sense of self-worth than it was than it actually bestowed. Uh, then it, it was just it was just a completely ridiculous stat. And I personally consider follower follower and subscriber counts and that uh, and that those birds chirping meant it's time to take my antibiotics real quick. Those uh th those followers were, I mean, it was basically just to help me get to the Twitch affiliate program quicker. Nothing more, nothing less. The, and if you think that's scummy of me, then you can go ahead and think that's scummy of me. I don't really give a fuck what you think. Well, that's not really that that scummy is the way you put it because it's it's no different to asking your best mates to follow your Twitch, which they'll never watch. Yeah. You know what I mean? Those yeah. Increased Those people And the people who I asked to follow me were already my fans anyway. Yeah. It, it, it can come off a bit scummy, but I, I suppose there is no difference. And bear in mind that uh, the follower count was only one factor that I needed to meet in order to get to Twitch affiliate. I also had to have a, an average of three viewers, like an like a three viewer average over the past thirty days, and I had to have streamed at least, uh, I think eight times in the past thirty days, or maybe it was eight hours, seven different days, and so basically the follower count was the easiest stat to meet. I also in order in order to get Twitch affiliate, I also had to meet a lot more stats that were a lot harder for me to fake. Yeah, well, yeah, understandable. Um, and um, the state DMCA strike with uh just just Emmy, it's unknown if it was successful or not. Was that successful or with who? 
Just Emmy? Just Emmy. Um, Just Emmy has not yet issued a counter notification, so I'm going to assume, and let me just pull up, uh, I'm gonna, let me just pull something up real quick. Uh, hold on a minute. Let me, uh, Shit. Where's I? <sighs> yeah, I might take. Uh, just a minute. I let me pull. Let me. It's it's not showing up in the Google search, so I'm gonna have to search elsewhere for it. <sighs> Shit. <laughs> it was here a few days ago when I was preparing for this for this sort of shit. So why isn't it here now? Okay. I'm gonna have to. Okay, here we go. So I'm gonna send this link to you. And yep. uh, basically, because Just Emmy has not issued a counter notification, that is my current stance on the success of those DMCA's. Silence gives consent. Yeah, you can post that. Uh, vis that you can post that web page, a screenshot of that web page when you go to edit, if you are so inclined. Yeah, yeah, well, for sure. Um, and oh, I'm going to add pop up ad. And pretty much, um, I I have not seen any uh, other video from uh, uh, what is it, Sophia Payne? P P there. What, what's happened with that? Uh, I, I don't know. What do you mean, what's happened with that? Uh, right. Did you... Could, you said previously before, yeah, you're going to take some um, DMC strikes off. Have you done any of them? You like, know, people you were... So, you know, as soon as I issued that partial apology, I never said that I was going to take DMC strikes off. I said I was going to consider taking them off. And when, and as soon as I did that, everybody started being great a dickheads about it, acting like, "Oh, you need to do this and this and this." Don't tell me what to fucking do. You are not my goddamn mommy. So you know, uh, people were so bossy and dickheaded towards me that basically I changed my mind. I decided, no, all I, I'm not required to retract anything just because I later found out. So no, I so so no, I decided that I wasn't going to because people were fucking assholes about it. So if you're gonna double down on your hatred towards me, I'm gonna double down on on being on being clam um, on just giving you the cold shoulder. So no, you wanted me to you want me to start doing to, to work things out with you? Maybe actually be a bit more amical towards me because you can't make me do anything without a court order. So if you want to persuade me to do something, you need to use persuasion tactics, not harassment. Uh, I don't know, like, some of, some of these, uh, some, some people are just out there to just, you know, commentate and, and use YouTube as a hobby. And these, some of these DM, DMCA strikes just have kind of ruined their hobbies a little bit, in my opinion. If their hobbies are harassing people and doxing them, then I don't give a fuck. See, so in, in oh, God damn, I'm butchering these so bad. In Clive Emily, like, free, free DM CA strikes, one retracted. Which video did you retract that on? What do you, what do you I've been what watching you? I've been I've been watching Emily a fair bit on YouTube just to do a bit of research and all that and they do make some pretty good content. Okay, can you actually but, just uh, ask a question for me? I can't really respond okay. to this. Okay, okay, so you retracted one DMCA strike on exclusive Emily. Enclave Emily. Yeah, that's it, sorry. Uh, butchering these so bad. Um 
Which which video was that? It was for a compilation video where she attempted to put my video, where she attempted to put statements of mine side by side in an attempt to highlight the hypocrisy. Uh, I it, basically, I I agreed to retract the the uh, DMCA on the condition that she remove all instances of my personal history. And she agreed to those terms, so she uploaded a set, a replacement video that was compliant with our agreement. And as soon as I as soon as the DMCA on the first one got retracted, she deleted that first one per our agreement. But then a few weeks later, she decided, no, fuck it, I've changed my mind, and I'm gonna go back on the agreement, and I'm gonna start uh, posting his personal information, even though I agreed not to, and. And and frankly, at that point, she just soured any goodwill she might have had with me because, hey, we had an agreement. You're not following that agreement. So your your videos are in violation of our agreement, which means you don't even get to claim fair use, not when we had an agreement. If we have an agreement, that's going to override default things such as co-authorship and fair use and shit. The court's going to defer to our agree any agreements we make, any contracts we make. Uh, and, and, uh, and we're only, it's only going to be, the court's only going to consider fair use if there is nothing that we agreed to prior to this. Uh, Enclave Emily and I had, she agreed to take out all instances of my personal history when she was criticizing me, which then she, she, once she agrees to that, she can't just change her mind and, and start doxing me again. So that's one of the biggest reasons why I I'm so why I feel that my DMCA's against her were legitimate. Yeah. Not to mention the fact that her videos just don't even qualify as fair use on their own, but that's just one of those things where we're going to have to agree to disagree and let our uh, let my talking be done in court. Well, uh Fair enough. So that's why I said go to court. I think it's Sid, Sid Alpha's um, organizing a fundraiser, isn't he? I don't. I don't care about okay. that. Go and organize that damn fundraiser. Get yourself a couple of pizzas. I don't give a shit. Um, and with uh, Baby Fazy. Baby um, Fazy. Uh, yeah. He he basically just took the law into his own hands and issued a bunch of DM false DMCAs against me in order to give me a taste of what he considered to be my own medicine, which is just blatant vigilantism. And so I'm holding... I'm So, so I'm going to be suing him because his, DMC his false DMCAs were just a blatant case of him trying to take the law into his own hands. Yeah, um... So I, I, I can't even find his YouTube channel. I can't even see anything at all about him. I think I, his YouTube channel probably got taken down. Maybe I don't know, and I don't. Uh, and, and until I, I, and until I receive unequivocal confirmation to the contrary, I'm just gonna assume that he has suffered no punishment at all. Yeah. Um. Well, I got an email here from Sid Alpha saying, um, and I'll say word for word. He goes. One thing I can say in regards to that interview, what we're talking about now, is to say that I provide to you on record that BB Fazy did was beyond beyond the pale, and I will expend no resources nor even attempt to defend that person for uh, feeling bl uh, bluntly like that doesn't mean pretty much say. That he's pretty much he... that he's not gonna, he's not going to support BB Fazy because what BB Fazy did was really wrong. That doesn't mean so he's been gonna... punished by losing his channel. No, no, no. I'm, I'm just saying, I can't personally find his channel, so I, I'm assuming that it got taken down. I but was unable to I find did... his channel back when those DMCA strikes were still fresh, so I wonder if he even had a channel. Like, in the first place. So anyway, anyway, next question you want to ask me about? Um... Yeah, so I know, I've watched pretty much all Sid Alpha's videos about all this stuff, and they're, they're pretty much on point. To be honest with you, like, he, he 
it does explain everything really well. Well, I mean, uh, to a lot of, I mean, I'm sure a lot of people would think that, but to a lot of people, they're already predisposed to hate Acer Thorn's guts. So anything, even a cuss-filled rant that is against me, they are going to think is well thought out and well researched. It, it bear in mind that the that courts of law are not persuaded in the slightest by the court of public opinion. You, people can can just can just rally with picket signs around the court demanding that I face justice for my actions, but the judge and the jury are still going to try me on my own merits, and if there's not enough evidence that I've done anything wrong, they're going to acquit me. And the people outside with their picket signs, well, they can just get butt hurt. Court of public opinion has no weight in a court of law. Period. So you say his uh, his arguments were well thought out. Well, uh, here, I got an, uh, I got one two middle fingers telling you exactly what I think about how well you think his arguments are well thought out. That doesn't matter yeah, but, in the slightest. But one point eight million. I mean, that's a that's a bit of a steep, don't you think? A bit of a what? Steep, like you know, like a lot. I should say. Uh, uh, is that an Australian figure of speech? Because I don't know what that means. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, pretty much. So it means like, you know, 1.8 million. That's a, that's a bit much, don't you think, like, to be I, thought for. If it's a, if I'm charging a fee of $20 per, for, uh, per view for the right to view that stream, and and he's giving people a way of viewing it without paying me that fee I think he ha I think I have the right to recover that fee for every person who's getting to view the content without paying me the fee I uh, didn't even show that much in my opinion man. I think he showed the heart like, of it what? he showed the primary reason anybody would come to that would want to pay to see it well uh, the sounds the random sounds you made I, I it's debated whether or not I even made them, and it's also irrelevant because it uh, because at the same time I have the copyright to it. So I'm I'm, uh, I'm sorry, but I'm not going to go into that at the moment. That is ongoing litigation. I've said my piece. I'll do my talking in court. Oh, um, I don't really actually have any more questions to be honest. Well, I'm so, I'm sorry that it's come to all of this. I'm sorry that everybody has been led so far astray. I am not the victimizer here. I am the victim, and I am hoping that once all this court drama gets sorted out, my, I, people will will start to re well maybe not uh, they're not going to accept that they were wrong, but they I'm hoping that they'll just be forced into leaving me alone and dropping this harassment bullshit, because ultimately. At the end of the day, even if my even if a few of my DMCA's might have been questionable, then it, it ultimately doesn't matter because this is a case of some people with a potentially, uh, and I emphasize the word potentially here, a potentially legitimate grievance against me, losing whatever legitimacy they might have already might have otherwise had by going about things in pretty much the wrongest way possible by harassing and doxing and dogpiling me and inciting other people to do the same. So, I'm, I mean, so you say I, my DMCA's were false? Take it up in court. Do not harass me about it. I don't give a shit how butthurt you are that I'm, quote, abusing the DMCA. That's a question for the courts. Take your self-righteous desire to see me punished and see me punished with your own hands, take your desire to tar take the law into your own hands and shove that right up your ass. You want me to stop being, you want me to stop issuing DMCAs? Maybe uh, just like before, you're not going to get me to do that by harassing me. You're only going to make me double down. And if you want me to persuade me to do something, then you need to be persuasive, not coercive. Because I'm not, I'm, no, fuck the harassment, 
I don't. You're not going to convince me that I'm wrong just because people are posting hate comments on my YouTube channel and sending me mess, sending me hate messages, telling me to kill myself. No, that is not going to fucking work. No, uh, well, no, no one should condone violence, doxing, harassment at all, and that's why I'm disabling the YouTube comments because yeah. as we agree to, and because. No, no doxing, no harassment, and yeah, physical violence. That is not on. And I'm pretty sure most most people in that lawsuit will agree with that as well. And yet they were the um, ones who were actively engaging in that harassment and doxing. Um. Anyway, um. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Hey, Fawn, I'm gonna. Probably go to sleep now, <laughs> and then well, and then tomorrow you can uh, start the editing for this this interview and put it on. Yeah, YouTube. it might. It, it's my very first YouTube video, so it might take a little bit to you know do all the editing, editing, and get some That's gameplay fine. footage and all that to do overlay. But yeah, first off, I'm going to sleep. <laughs> yeah, me too. It's it's after nine o'clock for me, so yeah. <laughs> Well, right. it was nice finally getting to get that off my chest. No worries. Thank you for agreeing to it, mate. Thank you. And we'll be in contact. Thank you.